this one apparently had problems with the film advance. The uh, rewind apparently locked up when the film was being rewound into the cassette and the film advance mechanism didn't seem to want to work afterwards and so investigations were made and things didn't go well. So we need to investigate what went wrong if we can and see if it could have been put back together easily. So I'm just checking the, uh, the loose parts here. See what we've got and what we haven't. Well, it's all looking fairly promising. Let's take the rewind off, I think, and uh, there is no film in there, is there? No, of course not. Take the rewind off and delve into this, I think. Apparently, I suspect that the shutter release shaft fell out. When it was being investigated, but of course that doesn't tell us much about the state of things prior to that. Let's lift this off, see what we've got. Well, the spring's off the shutter release. Let's see about putting that back in place. I'm just checking there's a little washer that sometimes present and sometimes is not. It's not there, so we'll just assume that it was never present. Put the shutter release back in place. The film advance. It looks like that's partly partly through its action. What happens? Well, that looks fairly promising. Let's just put the top back on it and see how it goes and then find out what doesn't go. That looks like that's going to work, which of course is a bit of a mystery. Put that spring back there, put that button on the top put the top cover on. I won't put the screws in the end at the moment, we'll leave them out. Put the frame counter spring in place. I'll assemble these components together. Now these are look like they've been stuck together with assembly grease. It looks to me I think that might, let's have a look at this, I think that was on the wrong way round, that would have locked at 22, it was, so frame counter was incorrect, that disc should have been there, so that would have had a tendency to lock the film advance at frame 22 or thereabouts. Let's put this on there, oh graphite grease this as I can tell because my hands are getting dirtier by the second. Put this on here. Oh, I can get all this on there in one piece. Rotate that. That sounds right. Now, hang on, there's something missing here. Let's just lift this off. I'm supposed to have that spacer on there. Back where we were. the washer and the screw. 
and it would help if I had the right tool on hand. It's not far away. Let's check that that's that's okay. Okay, so the film advance appears to work. Um, let's put a screw in the top cover so it doesn't come adrift. Need to explore possible problems with the film rewind. So I would have no complaints with that. What's happening inside the camera? That looks good. Here, yeah, the clutch has got controlled drag. It's certainly not excessive. The rewind button, if we press that in, we can rewind our film. If we move the film advance, the rewind button pops back again. So, the thick plottings. What we have here is a camera with no obvious serious faults. Mm-hmm, so the film wouldn't rewind. Now the rewind button sticks in and it pops back out when the film advance is moved. I wonder if it wasn't pressed in all the way. When you get to the end of the film you may end up in a situation but where your film advance is sticking out at some odd angle, you've just come to the end of the film, nothing will move any further. And if you press the rewind button at that point, depending exactly where it's sitting at the time, the lever may be being, be, being released by the film advance action. Let's see if we can get find the right position for this. Yeah, if the film advance lever was in exactly that spot, I can't get the rewind button to stick down, it immediately just pop back up again. I suspect that was the case, that it was sitting somewhere where the lobe on the end of the film advance was holding back the lock for the rewind. What would be the answer? Well the answer is simple, you want to get the film advance lever back in the rest position quick smart. So typically you would hold the rewind button down with your finger if it didn't want to lock there, wind the film back into the cassette a turn or so, swing the film advance through its arc so that it returned to the rest position, then you could press in your rewind button that would stay clicked in and you could happily rewind the film into the cassette. I suspect that that was the problem with this one. Of course I don't know. This is here for service anyway. I can see that the door's a little bit rattly there which suggests that it's a bit loose at this point. Now when it's loose at that point it means that the front standard isn't, isn't supported very well. It'll rattle up and down. If it rattles up and down you end up with inconsistencies in timing of when the shutter releases relative to the film advance releasing. There's a little bit of haze on the inside of that lens too by the looks of it, so it could certainly benefit from a clean. The fresh grease in that film advance mechanism there suggests to me that that was done in comparatively recent times. So I don't know whether this was a camera that somebody had serviced before my customer got hold of it or not. That lens is quite hazy. That's um, quite a marked degree of hazing in there. Mm. 
that's very very hazy now haze on the xenon lenses on the retina 2a's is very frequently an uncleanable deterioration of the glass surface it's on two glass surfaces it's the surfaces facing the shutter blades in both the front and rear groups it's an atmospheric thing it's it's the, the glass itself is just deteriorated so it, it's not something you can clean away however that's some of them in fact it's possibly even the majority sometimes there is a cleanable haze on there as well or instead so what I've, I won't know until I attempt to clean this lens whether that's going to clean or not I can certainly see that that surface is very hazy but I won't know much more about it until I attempt to clean it it could be one could be the other we'll know later well I cleaned that lens it's not a hundred percent but it's pretty good so the haze that was present in that front group at the back of that front group that mostly cleaned straight away um, the residual haze may not or if I give it a more thorough cleaning that may improve too but yeah I certainly wouldn't see a problem using that lens uh, a lens hood would certainly be of benefit you could say that about any camera really a lens hood is usually a clever thing to have the rear group I can see haze in there too um, very possibly that will clean away as well when you get haze on the internal surfaces there I think it's probably mostly attributable to um, a haze of uh, an, an oil haze for all practical purposes from oil now the focus of this camera that focus helical is loose it, that moves much too freely it, it looks dry and it's sitting at an odd angle here to the frame it's just, just I suspect that one of the screws is not uh, doing its job or that may indeed just be bent certainly this is rattly so you know it's had a little bit of a hard life but there's a munch mark here on that button at the base there that's rough now normally that only comes in contact with thumbs so that suggests to me that it's hit the ground yeah this is loose at the front that whole lens and shutter assembly is loose on the front standard and the front standard it rattles up and down because there's too much play at the arms here they need to be adjusted so yeah it certainly needs a service I think it'll be a good going one once it's done I'll report back later I think I've done enough two A's on line lately so you probably don't need to watch the, the blow by blow on this one here you can see what I mean about the rewind button normally if your film advance lever is sitting back at the rest position press the button in here and you'll see that the latch swung across and holds the button down and as you swing your film advance that arm comes around hits the end of that lever swings it out of the mechanism here and allows the button to pop back up if your film advance lever is sitting at this point partly swung out because you're at the end of the film and the lever is just sitting there in space you'll see that it's it's holding back this latch and so the rewind button will not click in and that can fool you into thinking that uh, you've clicked in the rewind and you wonder why the film's not rolling back into the cartridge and it'll be because your film advance lever is not in the park position it's somewhere else than the park position of course once you start making a swing you can only complete the swing you can't push the lever back without completing the swing and the answer is quite simple as I said 
hold the rewind button and start rewinding the film. You don't need to go far. Swing your advance lever, allow it to come back to the rest position. Press the rewind button in and of course it'll click in and um, you're away laughing. You can wind your film back into the cassette. But that'll be it. This is a relatively early Retina 2A. As a result, it has a single bar across here. It would release this in one of two positions. Later cameras had a cross-shaped section on the front here and they'd release it in four, four positions. So there you go. That's the secret there. I'm just taking this apart now. While I'm working my way through it, one of the first things I noticed was that it's going to need servicing anyway because the rangefinder does not want to return to the infinity position. It's just gummed up with dried out grease and sand. There's a fair bit of sand in here. So the camera certainly needed serviced. It uh, probably just got here a bit earlier than it otherwise would have done. More obvious problems. This shroud on the front here that holds the gear from the shaft that runs through to the back of the camera, that's rattling around loose. Those two screws are loose. Now here, I mentioned that this focus scale ring was sitting at an odd angle. Well, the head of the screw is pulled through at that point, which means that this has probably been taken a thump when it was round in this position and lifted it past that screw head. So, yeah, the... Uh, position of that focus scale ring is, is only marginally suspect. Um, I'll know more once I get it off. But the, that helical is absolutely lacking in appropriate lubrication. It's, it's quite smooth in its action, but it's far too loose. It's like it's got nothing in there at all. The rattle in the front of the camera, which I took to be these four nickel-plated screws being loose, making the focus mount loose on the front, is actually just to the, down to the focus helical itself. You can hear it rattle. That's because there's absolutely no grease in there. Those pieces must be dry or so close to it it doesn't matter. As you can see, the, that's the original grease. It's just dried right out. That's um, pretty messy. Oh well, what can you do, eh? All these parts will get cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner, in solvent first and then in detergent. So it'll all come out shiny like new. Well, it's a dark and dismal Monday, but as you can see, after the parts came back from the cleaning, I assembled everything and I've got a good working camera body. Everything's nice and snug. Everything works well. I haven't done the shuttery yet, of course, but the rangefinder's been cleaned and adjusted. Everything's working nicely. The last thing I want to attend to on this body is Zeiss bumps. Now, you can see there's a slight Zeiss bump on the back there. I'm not going to chase that. That would be silly. But, on the strap lugs at both ends, there's a bump right here and here. This one being the worst. Now I'm not going to pull those leathers off completely to deal with those ice bumps. I'm just going to peel it back right there beside the strap lug and scrape out the muck from underneath. Wipe it out carefully and glue that back. There's um, no need to remove the leather completely to do that. And it would be, it would be silly. The uh, potential for disasters when stripping leather is always present. You know, it's, you can always run into trouble. So, if you don't need to strip leather, don't do it. I'll just lift this leather with the tip of my tweezers. And... I've got a crochet hook here. I'll fish in there and see if I can pull out the probably nasty green scone. She has a bit of it there. Nothing too bad. 
can check that the leather sort of lies flat. That looks a lot better. Just scrape under here a bit. That looks good. Now, to clean that a bit more thoroughly, I'm going to use a cotton bud, but of course if cotton bud is too bulky to actually fit under that piece of leather without stretching the leather up to some ridiculous extent. So I'm just going to roll a bit of cotton around the tip of my tweezers, soak that with a bit of naphtha, and use that little wad of cotton to clean under there and remove that greasy waxy green rubbish you can see that's come out quite a bit there and I'll go back in and have another go Oh, that's good. More came out that time. And there's two reasons I need to clean under here. One is because that green rubbish will actually be stretching the leather up and make, creating the bump. And the second is that because of its greasy nature, it will stop the adhesive from being able to stick things down, stick the leather back down well. Well that's quite good. That's a good result there so I'm just going to uh, put some adhesive there and glue that back. Really I want a piece of paper here now. Right a piece of paper, a toothpick at the ready, Squirt some of this adhesive on here. I think I'll get two toothpicks. Right, so I'll just coat this one with a bit of glue. Lift up the leather. Work that adhesive underneath it. Press that leather back down. And I'll just put a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud and wipe around the outside edge to remove any trace of adhesive that had squeezed out onto the body edge. And there we have it, that Zeiss bump is gone. And basically I'll do exactly the same with this one on the other side. This was the smaller of the two. You can see the larger of the two is gone. So I'll do that and then that's the body finished with. But before I um, stop telling you about the body, I did discover something interesting with this. You may recall that the story was that the owner had reassembled it um, trying to chase what was probably an imaginary problem with the rewind and uh, after that he couldn't get it to advance at all and I had no problem in that regard. I just put everything back together and it worked quite smoothly. But there was one thing I noticed. When I mentioned the shutter release and uh, I was probably mentioned the presence of a small spacer washer that was sometimes present on these and sometimes not. And there was no sign of it amongst the parts when I opened up that bag of loose pieces. But after I disassembled the camera, I found that spacer washer on the bench. So what it means is that 
probably so I ran out of space on the card there for a second so what I was saying is that the my customer wasn't able to get the film advance to work and gave up at that point I was able to put the film advance back together and it worked perfectly there was no obvious fault present but the presence of that little washer that little spacer from the shutter release um, that could easily have been anywhere in the mechanism um, it had fallen in somewhere inconvenient and that could have easily stopped the action from moving for my customer it had fallen out of the inconvenient place when I got to it and when I reassembled the camera everything worked smoothly but that washer would certainly explain why my customer was unable to get the film advance to work correctly that he said it was jammed but I had no trouble and it would have been the presence of that washer and where, how would the washer have got loose? well we know that the camera had been inverted when the top had been off the camera and presumably the shutter release fell off came off at that point came out of the camera and as soon as the shutter release shaft was loose that washer which would have been sitting on that shaft would have had the opportunity to fall out and I think that would explain it that would certainly explain the mystery as to why my customer was unable to get the film advance mechanism to work after he'd investigated the rewind problem which probably never existed um, and there we have it so a bit now I've just got to deal with this Zeiss bump on this side and then I've got to do with the shutter